In today's project, we're going to make a commemorative Christmas ornament for the year 2020. We'll use this thin foam sheet for the body, and we'll use these pictures as a rough target. For the pictures, we learned the proportions of the ornament, and we're cutting it now to size. After the cuts, I'm using 150 grit sandpaper to smooth out the sides. I'm sanding two at a time to keep them all equal. Next, I'm applying glue to the sides to form the body. This is the first time that I've used construction adhesive for a foam project. Normally, I'd use barge cement for bonding and quick seal for the seams. I ended up using construction adhesive for both steps in this project. Next, we'll work on the sides of the dumpster. I'm folding some cardboard into shape. Let's mix up some paint to match the approximate color of the foam. It doesn't need to be exact, as we're just gonna end up painting everything after we fix the seams. I'm using these acrylic paints. Focus, focus, uh, forget about it. It's light green. While the paint's drying, we'll work on the lids. I've cut up more of that cardboard into strips. That'll be used for the texturing and we'll be gluing it again in place with construction adhesive. The paint is dry now, attaching it to the sides. And now it's time to work on the seams. I'm filling them in with construct adhesive and I'm also filling in any other imperfections. And then I'm gonna be smoothing that out with some water on my finger. Originally, I planned to use this fan from an old laptop to make the flames move. However, this fan hardly moves any air at all, so I had to improvise. A propeller and motor from this damaged drone will be plenty for this ornament. So, let's remove the propellers, then the housing, and I'm using the screwdriver to push out the motor. Next, let's snip off the leads, and then we'll need to extend out the wires. We'll use these LED flickering lights to light up our project. Specifications show 9 to 12 volts, but they'll also work with a single 3 volt battery, which I'll be using to power everything in this project. We need some way to mount the propeller motor. I'm wrapping some wire around it to hold it in place, and then bending out a spiral for the mount. I'll add some heat shrink tubing to tighten that hold. If you're planning to do this too, don't hold the heat too close to the propeller or else it can deform. You can remove the propeller during this step to play it safe. Here I'm using wood glue to bind the wire mount to the foam. I have a gallon of this stuff from a previous project, so I've been coloring outside the lines a little bit to make use out of it but it does a good job holding that plastic to the foam. Next, I'll be cutting this bag into rough flame shapes. I'll be taping it to the interior of the ornament.
Since the propeller's original intention was to push airflow down, here I'm flipping it upside down and will be pushing the air upward. Next, let's work on the graffiti. I'm using GIMP for the design. Fortunately, there's a ready-made graffiti font already on the web. I'm hoping to find a yellow virus image on Google. I'm not having any luck. I did find a red one, but the color's graded. Switching the color on a color graded image can be a bit tricky for new users. I'll show you why. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the color palette to index, then we'll tell it to only use one color. This will remove that gradient. Next, we'll use the bucket tool to make it all yellow. Let's give it a transparent background, and then we'll use this for the zeros in our 2020 image. The graffiti has a black shadow, but our virus images don't have any. So here's what to do. Expand the border of the image. Then we'll create a new transparent background underneath it, and we'll bucket fill that to make it black. Then we'll move that background image around to match the direction of the shadow of the font. Next, we'll use the same yellow color to paint the textures of the letters and numbers on our image. Then expand the image to match our canvas size so it fills up the entire space of the front of our dumpster. You can print directly from GIMP. I like using Word because I like to preview the print first. Either way, use best as the print quality. The normal default print quality setting can result in banding of the image and less crisp lines. I've printed it on sticker paper and I'm cutting out the words. For hard to reach bits, you can use a sharp knife or you can just decide to color them black with a black sharpie. I folded a piece of window screen to create a permeable bridge over the fan, and I've expanded out a cotton ball to use for the smoke. Using wood glue to attach that cotton to the screen, but this is going to be way too much cotton, and it's going to block the airflow. But let's test it out. I've removed the cotton for now, and we'll color the screen black so it's less noticeable. We have good airflow now. I'll add more cotton at the very end to find the right balance. Let's make a switch to turn on the fan and the lights. Here I'm using the left lid for this. When the lid is fully shut, it completes the circuit. Now I'm finding the center of balance using a round pencil underneath it. This will tell me where to mount the hanging wire. The sped up frame rate makes it look like the drill is spinning the wrong way. Feed in the hanging wire and create a knot on one end. Or as I'm doing, just create a spiral since the ornament doesn't weigh very much. Repeat the process on the other side. All right, here's the completed project. Let's put it on the tree and hope we don't have to make another one of these ornaments in the near future.